leading up to day one jump 190 in the high jump at like I think it was only 16 or 17. I saw Blanca Vlasic was in my like little call room I sat next to her and I was like this is so <laughs> weird like I was such a fangirl at people in my competition I was like right I can't I can't even think of this I have to compete against these people like when and it's different end of the spectrum but like when they had the light show that was <sighs> amazing like that was such a big part of the whole channel i hated the light show oh. simply no 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 no, no. Okay. I, 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 mean, I started when i was five so i've been doing this a long long time okay. and i think i need to kind of remember how old i am like at the end of world champs i was just so upset with how i performed and i mm. need to think like i am still 22 i am still learning mm. although i have been in the sport a long time there is still things that i like learn and learning now so yeah that for me that was like almost my world champs because i put so much into it and the season had just gone so badly I, there was points in the season where i was like i don't even think i can high jump anymore like mm. i just lost all faith in myself and my ability and everything. So I think by the time I got to Doha, I was just so, I obviously wanted Relieved. to do well. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to do well, I wanted to make the final, but in the back of my mind, I knew that it wasn't, it wasn't gonna be my chance, to be honest. Favorite, okay, so favorite song. Oh, do you know what that I'm so bad at? So I'm like, oh, I love, I love this music, I love this. I don't know what the songs are called. What? <laughs> Because I'm like, garlic on pizza makes like garlic bread. Okay, yeah. Cool. Aubergine's nice vegetable. Put that on top. I can't. <laughs> I, I'm, I can't find I the know. words it's for a this. Weird one. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Athletics Productions. We've got a special guest in today, as you can see. She was in the World Championship recently, and we've got Morgan Lake. She's an eye jumper, but some people might say she wants to do something else as well. <laughs> so we'll ask her about it. Okay, how are you um, doing today? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Good. How was your competition been this season? Obviously, it's been a long season for you. A long season. A really <laughs> long season. When did you start competing this year? So I started in January. So, yeah. So New like season. Had him. For the Indoor season. season. Mm -hmm. Did you go to the um, British Miller Games? Yeah. No? The one in Glasgow? So no, there was no high jump in Glasgow. So my okay. first like prop competition was in Czech Republic. Um, they have like a little high jump tour. It's quite cool. Um, and then did trials, the Europeans, and then yeah, had a little break. What was your um, best competition? Mm. over the indoor season so i'll put it in two ways so yeah best series mm -hmm. and then like best overall height over the indoor season so my first competition was that one in january so yeah. 197 british record pb like i was like oh my god this is my year i'm yeah. gonna <laughs> i'm gonna go, like go to doha win it basically this is mm. this is it um and then it kind of went down a little bit from there went to trials jump 94 became british champs i was like okay it's cool mm -hmm. and then it kind of just went down and down from there um, so why do you think do you think it's because it's went on for so long mm. or um do you just think it's just the preparation were just not or your body just sort of gave yeah. up at that point because it's, it yeah. is quite a long time to from january to september mm -hmm. to pretty much train and have you ever done that before no never done that before. <laughs> um yeah i think so in january i was like i really want to just do short-term goals so i was like okay i want to do well in january get my standard for world champs out the way, which mm -hmm. I did. And then I'm like, right, I'm gonna focus on European champs. Um, and then a couple weeks after that first competition, my dad had a stroke, which was like a massive, massive shock to our family. Um, like he was my coach as well before that. <clears throat> he was my coach at the time, but he's always been like really involved in my athletics. So that kind of gave me a different perspective on my, like that wasn't my number one focus at the moment anymore okay. but also i want to do well to like, kind of like make him proud and mm -hmm. like i didn't want to completely change my life so yeah because mentally that would have affected mm -hmm. you no matter how yeah. old you are <laughs> yeah exactly how, how did that affect you so obviously yeah. that's happened in mm -hmm. the middle of like your early part of your season yeah um and then that happens that like, mentally when you were trying to compete yeah was that kind of on your mind as well almost, almost yeah, like yeah, a yeah. barrier 
Yeah, so that will happen the week of British Champs. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't think he, like, anyone really expects me to compete. I was like, in my head, I know I'm in really good form. Yeah. And I know that he wouldn't want me to not compete just because of him. Like, I think he kind of felt, not obviously not guilty, but like, I don't know how he would have felt. But I was like, I want to go out and compete and like do him proud. Um, so I jumped 194, became British champion. And no one really knew at the time. I was doing interviews and I was like, quite happy. Like, I was almost shocked about how it didn't really affect me. And then mm. I think after that, it just kind of all Can't hit at once. Oh, yeah. um, like, once I just kind of got that out of the way, I was like, oh, this is... This is more than athletics. This is a, like a big thing that's going on in my life. Whereas beforehand, I think like everything had been kind of around performance wise. Like yeah. Yeah. Um, if things hadn't gone well, I'd be upset. But like that's the only reason for that kind of like mindset. Um, and then yeah, going to, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> 800 is gone. Um, going to uh, the European champs, I think I was just like so emotionally drained. Mm-hmm. Um, like I've been like a few months later and that kind of like cut off my season and I was like right I made the final um third attempt but I made the final (laughs) got there (laughs) and didn't do as well as I'd hoped to perform but I was like right like athletics isn't an indoor sport like it's absolutely amazing to do well indoors but everything for me was going towards yeah exactly going towards Doha (laughs) yeah definitely do do you think I think um someone else touched on this but I can't think Mm. who it was do you think that there is a massive gap between being world indoor champion or world European mm-hmm. um, European indoor champ versus being the outdoor equivalents? Do you think there's a massive gap between them? Or would you say like, well, I'm champion regardless mm-hmm. of whether it's indoors or outdoors, I'm still champ? It's a hard one. I think it depends on the event. Mm-hmm. Um, depends on where we kind of what season is so like obviously going to olympic season and yeah. there's a world indoor champs and i don't think a lot of people will be going to it i mean it's in yeah. china it's quite late and with an early olympics it's like that is a hard turnaround if you're gonna go into that championships and like give it your all and then prepare yourself and then for, yeah I like to get to Tokyo. <laughs> the last this last let's say like the last year so we'll go from this year into next yeah. year no. they've not played it into you guys hands yeah, literally it's because, been like one after the other isn't uh-huh. it? yeah so you finished I mean, some people's season finished in August. Obviously, yeah. as your, um, yourself finished late September, yeah. early October. Now you're back into training up, um, from what you said earlier on. Mm-hmm. And then it's World world Indoor Champs next year. Yeah. And then you've got Olympics as well. And is there anything else in and between that time? Not in between, but obviously got European Champs, which is, mm-hmm. I think it's two weeks after the Olympics. Um, the Grand Prix and like all the Diamond Leagues and stuff are just like straight after. So the season's Europe, just so, so out. Season's just started. <laughs> so wait, you've got Olympics and then and European. Then Europeans. Okay, so for yourself, mm-hmm. would you try to do both, or would you say, you know what, I've had the Olympics and I'm happy with that, or yeah. would you try and go for more? I think because I'm not planning to do world indoors, mm-hmm. I think I would almost. Well, I'm hoping, yeah. <laughs> hoping that goes to Tokyo. <laughs> I need to qualify. No, you're going. You're going. <laughs> okay. You're going. Um, yeah, in a perfect world, I'd do probably Tokyo. And then if you're already in that form, I feel mm-hmm. like it's quite early. And to really be in that top form, it'd be stupid not to go and do another championships after that. If So title yeah. on the line, I suppose. So yeah. what, do you, what do you think the um, team selection is going to be like? Because obviously, if a lot of you guys are not going to do the indoors, mm-hmm. would that be more chance? Or would you expect more juniors to come into yeah. that stage? Or we would... Oh, we do not pick them because obviously yeah. it might be too mentally draining for some of the junior ones to go in. Because you went to the Olympics under 20? Yeah. 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 It, was, it was like 20. It's scary because she's still, Brazil, like, right? <laughs> still quite young. Yeah, yeah. Like, how did you find that whole experience for, for yourself? Uh-huh. Was that your first major event? Well, um, for senior level. So my first major was, I think I was 17 and made the European champs team in... I should know where that was. I can't even remember where it was. I think it's in France. 2013. I can't remember where it was. It was somewhere. (laughs) Somewhere in Europe. 2013, I think. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so that was my first one coming off the back of World Juniors, which is the same year, 2014. And um, yeah, I think it was a weird experience for me because I just wanted to make the team. Mm -hmm. So I didn't expect to make the team. That wasn't my aim at all that year. Um, It's just making the team. I was like, cool, that's great. (laughs) Um, Next year was World Champs, 2015. Again, I was just like, 
so happy to make the team. team yeah. And once I got there, I was disappointed in my performance, but like my aim was just to get to get world to champs. That point. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then by the time I got to the Olympics, it was like my third major champ. So I wanted to do well. I think I went into that. Like I did, I made the final, I wanted to make the final on that. Again, I was like, right, I've kind of done what I need to do. How old are you again, if you don't mind me asking? 22. 22, okay. So bearing in mind that you are still quite young, mm -hmm it's interesting that you that you no longer have that oh well, you know like i'm still young i'm looking mm. to gain experience blah 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 because you already have that yeah um how would you speak to like an athlete who's probably just a couple of years younger than mm -hmm. you trying to do the same thing how what kind of advice would you give them going forward because you're still mm. like on the really young side yeah. of being in the senior team it is weird because i i mean i started when I, mean, I was five so i've been doing this a long long <laughs> okay. time and i think i need to kind of remember how old I am. Like at the end of World Champs, I was just so upset with how I performed. And I mm -hmm. need to think like, I am still 22, I am still learning. Mm -hmm. Although I have been in the sport a long time, there is still things I like learn, I'm learning now. So I probably just say, enjoy every opportunity mm -hmm. um, and don't change things too much. I think the biggest thing that I did was, so in 2016, made it the Olympic final and then decided to just completely change my setup, change okay. everything. Um, moved for Loughborough, changed coaches. Um, although it was working, like become, I was world junior champion, um, European champion, like things were doing well, but mm -hmm. I was like, right, I don't know how like to change this. I need to obviously get better. Um, so I was like, I'll just move. So I think I just say to people kind of like, if it's working, yeah, stick with just... it. <laughs> stick with it if it's working and just, yeah, just take every year as it comes. So what was the pressure like? Because obviously, You've now been there since you were, like you said, at 17. Yeah. And then this year going into the world champs, mm -hmm. what was that pressure like? Because now there, there would have been an expectation yeah. of you trying to obviously either get PB or pushing mm -hmm. into the medals. What was that pressure like going in, knowing obviously people all believed in what you, what you could do? Yeah. And after your last jump, because I was watching that, and after your last jump, you seemed so disappointed. Yeah. What was it like coming outside of that, you know, leaving the stadium mm -hmm. and then everything sinking in again? Yeah. What was that like for you? Um, it was a bit different this year because, like, it was very, obviously a very long season. Mm -hmm. um, so I got injured in April, um, the last week of all weather training. Yeah. And it was, thought it was like a tiny injury. So I kind of was like, oh, I'll be about a week. It was more than a week. <laughs> Two weeks, three. Like, it took about a month to kind of get over it, but right. I wasn't really training properly in that time. And by the time I, like, the injury had felt like it had gone, I was like, cool, like, just straight into training so, now, straight into competition. So I went straight in for the first Diamond League of the year, which was Oslo for me. Yeah. Um, and jumped 185, which is probably like one of the lowest I've jumped on the international scale for. A few years, um, so that really kind of hit me because I was like, oh, I actually went straight into competition, but I haven't done the training to compete. To compete. Mm -hmm. um, so then that was kind of playing in my mind. And then throughout the season, it just kind of went down and down and down, <laughs> um, to be honest. But so, yeah, I moved coach mid-season. So I went from <clears throat> training in Loughborough to coming home and training my dad mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the competitions weren't, weren't great. And then British champ, so luckily kind of filled it back up again. Um, came British champ, 94, which qualified for Doha. So it was all kind of getting better and better by then. But I think the time I got to Doha, I was done. <laughs> <laughs> Mentally and physically, I think I was, it was just a bit that step too far. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously in my head, I'm a competitor, so I want to do well. Because in the British champs, you are KJT, we're going at it. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was really good because obviously it was in the middle of, was it the 100 meters? Or yeah. like all the two and like... The two, I think. It kept having to stop everyone just for yeah. you guys to jump. And, you know, in that moment when you did make the jump, mm -hmm. it was amazing because you were both like really happy for each other yeah, at the yeah, same yeah. time. And just knowing you were going. Yeah. And going back to your dad again, mm -hmm. was he there? This yeah. Time, yeah 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 he was there this time um he actually made like a like ridiculous recovery so he's completely back to being normal no. now which is amazing um so yeah he was there coaching me the couple of weeks before it mm -hmm. um so yeah that for me that was like almost my world champs because i put so much into it and the season had just gone so badly i 
there was points in the season where I was like, I don't even think I can high jump anymore. Mm-hmm. Like I just lost all faith in myself and my ability and everything. So I think by the time I got to Doha, I was just so, I obviously wanted Relieved. to do well. Yeah, <laughs> oh. I wanted to do well, I wanted to make the final, but in the back of my mind, I knew that it wasn't, it wasn't yeah. going to be my chance, to be honest. If you, so during that period where you was like, oh, I don't even know if I can do this anymore. Yeah. Would it have been a thing where you look to do another sport within track and field? Because you mm-hmm. was a heptathlete before. Yeah. So would you have looked at, okay, so when I was doing this, this was another event that I was good at. Or yeah. would you have just shut it down completely? Yeah, I feel like the whole, the, like the last few years have been like, okay, when I go back to heptathlon, when I go, and I think <laughs> my head's just always been um, kind of like thinking about that mm-hmm. as well as high jump. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was, I've never done with the sport, but I think mid season, I was like, I'm just so done with this event. I think it's just <laughs> so draining to do that same thing, the same training, the same run up. It was just really, really got to me. Mm-hmm. Um, then it's also another thing like when it's going well, it's the best it's thing really ever. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I know I was only thinking that because it was going badly and I was like, yeah. I can do all these other events and I'm just almost just waiting, yeah, waiting for, it, <laughs> for the time to, to come where I can get it back. The event that- you know, that came to you, mm. essentially. Um, one thing I have always wanted to ask a high jumper is, you do these steps um, all the time, mm-hmm. like in training, it's just regiment, keep, yeah. keep it going. When you don't get that jump, mm-hmm. how do you reset yourself? And like, do you ever think, so, okay, this is why that didn't work. Like, yeah. how do you go, through, like, what process do you go through yeah. to make it right when it's gone wrong? Yeah, I think a lot of it is about feeling. I mean, you've mm-hmm. done that jump so, so many times and you can you just know when it's gonna go wrong, when, yeah. it's, when it's gone wrong. Um, the three attempts is great. If it was one attempt, <laughs> the world record would be nothing like it is. Okay. Um, yeah, that really. Would, is that something that you have thought about like aspiration-wise, like, oh, I wanna break the world record or is it more important to get titles and championships? Mm. It's a tough one. Mm-hmm. Like it's the whole like, would you rather world record or Olympic gold? And I think I've always said Olympic gold because yeah. no one can take that away from you. Yeah. And yeah. world records, you're just watching the rest of your life. Like, <laughs> you're higher than me. Nighty, I'm just waiting. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's I'm, like on your deathbed, it's, just watching the yeah. Do you know what? It's funny that you say that because sometimes like when you've got like, um like for Jonathan Edwards, when the triple jumps yeah. on, I'm sure he He's must be stressed. sitting there. <laughs> is it today is it he's today stressed. and then he sees something go over 80 meters and he's like okay no no, no oh, I'm that's good, good I'm that's good, good. good. Like, can you imagine the boat and obviously with Coleman coming through now and one day you know there's like a because obviously he had Tyson Blake mm-hmm. he had everyone around him if Coleman can get that around him and someone was going to push for that world record can you imagine him sitting there and like, I'm going to come out of retirement. <laughs> he could do it. It's funny that you say that. I think he'd actually be okay. I think he'd be all right. I mm-hmm. think he would he would just, for him, it'd be a case of, all right, that's one I've record, that's one yeah. record done. Oh yeah, you know, records two as well. Yeah. Yeah. Records are there to be broken. And then he can always turn and say, yeah, but I've got X amount of medals. Yeah, in medals, medals, yeah. yeah like, he's such like, a great, <laughs> athlete anyway like such yeah. a legend it's like no one can take that away from him it's like no matter what you could take one thing but he's still got this mm. he's got 12 and medals. <laughs> yeah. if i was him i would look at my medal tally versus yeah. how long that record, record might stand because that's mm-hmm. 10 years now like christ i'm like 10 years yeah. 10 years for that record but if he if he um if you look through the record books of olympics and world championships yeah that's mm-hmm. always going to be there. You'll never not look at that and say, oh, well, oh, he's fallen down a bit. Yeah. You'll never look at that. Because honestly, that. Nows, Nows was like saying it was going to break the 200 meter record. I didn't think it was, but because <laughs> <laughs> right, it, was, it was so, it wasn't running as efficient as it will, it would need to, yeah. to break that record. And everyone was like talking about it, but it was not going to do that at that competition. Mm. It might still do it. Yeah, it might still do it in the future. Both yeah. might just sit there going, you know what, and a year. <laughs> Have I had another year onto this? I would sooner see the 100 meter record go mm. before the 200. That That's my personal opinion. I think the 100 is easier to go than the two because yeah. i think even even as good as noah Laos is i reckon he'll get to about 19.3 america i think then, get yeah. the american record first yeah and, and then, then we can will. start looking at that but um so you yeah. said that you've been doing this since you were five yeah um that's <laughs> long that's a long time <laughs> a, long a very time. long time um so 
when you say you've been doing this since you were five, do you yeah. mean sports or track and field? So track and field. Okay. Well, things I can't even remember a time that I haven't done track. Like that's okay. that's how long I've been doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't the only sport I was doing. Uh, did basically every single sport I could. So I think so. My dad was an athlete when he was younger. Mm -hmm. So I think naturally because the passion that he had in it, I always kind of thought like oh, that's what I want to go into. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I started when I was really, really young, and I think <sighs> he's there training you around the track. Yeah, he was <laughs> running along behind him. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I did like tennis, swimming, netball, like everything. But yeah, athletics was always a sport where I was like, right, this is the others were like I enjoy them more like hobbies. Yeah, this is like I'm gonna make a career out of this. Like this is what I love. There's nothing else like in the world that I liked as much mm -hmm. as athletics. Okay. Um, I think it was good because also like at my club. Well, at the track I was at, there was like Mark Lewis Francis, Marlon Devonish, all the time just like hanging around. Um, so I think I was always around stars and mm -hmm. always around people where I could see this is actually a career, this is a this is a living. Whereas the other sports was like, yeah, this is enjoyable, but I don't really have- It's intrinsically yeah. So yeah. if you had to pick a sport that mm -hmm. wasn't track and field, what would you have gone for? It's a hard, well, if I was really good at it, yeah. any sport, yeah. probably tennis. Okay, um, tennis. I always found tennis, I always find tennis really difficult. Like, really? yeah, I cannot play tennis. I'm like, I'm not very good at <laughs> it. I'm like, if I was good <laughs> at it. I mean, I I tried it in school. Yeah, wasn't wasn't for me. Then I thought, you know what? Come guys, let's get some rackets yeah, and we'll yeah. go down the park. And I still couldn't get it. And in badminton, for for whatever reason, I was like, yeah, cool, got this. Badminton's <laughs> this is fair, fun. Yeah. But tennis for me was just it was never a thing. Yeah. But I mean, if you can throw the ball up and get it over the net, That's all, you need to do. All, all credit all credits to you because I can't do that. If, I try, I miss the ball, it goes somewhere yeah. else. Like, it's just, it's not for me. But okay, so been doing track since you were five. Mm. Um, having the stars there to kind of push you along in terms of saying, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Um, what was your like first track and field event? Like first competition, if you can remember back that far. I think it was more like the sports hall stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, that was so fun. <laughs> That's probably, yeah, when I first got into it, and I was doing like standing long jumps, standing yeah. like all those stuff. Yeah. But in yeah. my head, I was like, I want to be a long jumper. That's okay. all I want to do. Um, didn't even know what multi events was. Yeah. I was like, I don't like cross country, so I'm not <laughs> getting anything to do with that. It's um, always cross country going on. Like I've never noticed this. It's no. always something going on. Cross country is the worst <laughs> thing. I try my hardest to get out of that. I've I never did. done it. Never oh, will no, do no, it. Never no. done it. I've never done it. At the never most, done it. <laughs> so jealous. At, at the most, I might in a week i might do a three to five k that is absolutely wow. it yeah. i'm not and even then it's a struggle to get up to say i'm going I'm to do, do this because <laughs> i could easily do like the first 10 minutes and be like you know what i'm going home this yeah. ain't for me i just go to the gym and just cycle <laughs> with a 5k but yeah yeah cross country is not not the one um yeah so i was like okay so my dad was a triple jumper mm -hmm. he was coaching a jumps group so i was like yeah that's what that's what i'll go into um, so I think my first few competitions were, I did everything, mm -hmm. but I never really thought of it as, oh, I'll do everything, so I'll do heptathlon. It was more yeah. just, I'll do everything because that's what my club made me do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the whole, oh, come on, Morgan, we just do it, just do it for a yeah. point. You ain't got to jump really high, just get over the bar. Exactly. Right, just throw the shot put. But then I'm so competitive, so I was like, I can't just like go do out it. and do it. Like, like I have to win it. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, that's it. I that's, yeah, that was my negotiation. That's, that's another question because um, I've got a little athlete that doesn't know if she wants to do it. She's really yeah. good at the sprints and the jumps. Yeah, yeah. But she actually doesn't know if she actually wants to go into a athlete itself mm -hmm. because of the thrills and other things. And it's like, what advice do you, because I still encourage her to do everything because yeah. it's probably the best way. Yeah. But what advice do you even give to like someone? Because mm. she's quite small. Right. <laughs> she's really like she's really really small like five foot <laughs> and our family is they're all quite small so she's not gonna yeah, grow okay and she, but she really enjoys Just doing like small, that's true <laughs> that's true and <laughs> our strengths are really strong what yeah. advice do you give to someone that young she's 13 yeah okay that young for going into this event like do you just mm -hmm. carry on and just grow your confidence or do you slowly find something you like mm -hmm. and really focus on that 
while still trying to do the rest yeah i think I've, i'd always like tell any young athlete to do everything yeah. because there's been loads of people i've trained with when i was younger who have just specialized too early and then dropped out That's the sport it. yeah um mostly because they're not interested in it anymore and they've just kind of got bored of it and found something else um but it's not the only reason to carry on doing everything yeah. um but i think it just gives you that overall like conditioning as well and like, i know that i've I was a better, well, better high jumper <laughs> before when I was doing everything and I was actually like stronger in loads of different areas. Um, I think stuff with like throws, you just, <sighs> they're skills. Just like <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna grow and you're gonna get better at them. Mm -hmm. um, so it. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. Basically. Like, well, the first time I threw a shot put, it went nowhere. <laughs> Absolutely nowhere. <laughs> I was like, this is nice. I guess your height was what helped though. Like, yeah. just, <laughs> just launch it up there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I can vouch for you. I am not on the throw side of things at all. Like, and people say, oh, well, you know, if you've got long levers, it yeah. kind of helps. And I'm like, yeah, but there's no strength behind these levers. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, had no, I had no strength behind my levers, but I think with like shot put and javelin, it's really just getting the technique technical. right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's such a technical event. I think if you get that, then you can just build on everything else. Just yeah. get that like underlying skills. Everything. So at what point did you decide mm. to just focus on Nigel? I think the weird thing about it was it was never really a decision. Um, <laughs> it just kind of, yeah, it just kind of happened. So in 2016, um, like my main aim for that year was to make Rio in the heptathlon. Um, and I didn't make that, but I made the high jump. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, right, okay, cool. I'll just do high jump there and then go back to heptathlon that next season. So... I did go back to heptathlon, um, went to a new coach, new setup, and it just wasn't really working for me. Um, but then we had London 2017 that year. So I was yeah. like, I need to be in London. I need to meet the world champs team. I'll just go for high jump again. Um, and I think it's kind of, just kind of happened so, like so that. You, so do you have different coaches, obviously, for those events? Mm -hmm. Do you have just one coach that, coach that goes through it? Or do you have different coaches in different setups? Because how do you yeah. communicate that? I want to focus more on I jump now. <laughs> um, see you in a year yeah. time. <laughs> um, yeah, I did have loads of different coaches. Um, I had like my well, when, in my old setup, I had my dad as my long jump and speed coach, and then mm -hmm. I had a high jump coach, throws coach, S and C. So I had like loads of different people, different. and then my dad who was coordinating it. So how did you communicate? that period where you were uh -huh. like, I just want to do a jump for this season and then did it again. Yeah. <laughs> How did you communicate that with them? It was a weird one because it didn't really happen until like later on in the summer, oh, until right. like a couple of weeks before the champs. That's mm. when I was like, well, this isn't going, this isn't going to plan. So I'm going to have to just go. Oh, yeah, because you know how many points you can potentially get yeah. and then you can just work your way through it. Oh, that's a, yeah. well, I mean, that, that's fair enough, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so next season yeah. or next year, if you see yourself really good at everything mm -hmm. would you go back into it i think with tokyo being so close i'm just like i just can't even like think, think about that anymore yeah. mm -hmm. i think the last two years i've always just thought okay when i go back when if i was doing this 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 and i think my head's just been so like completely confused about yeah. what i'm actually wanting to do and like how i feel as an athlete so this year i'm just yeah being like i'm just gonna do high, high jump, jump and then after that, after Tokyo, after Europeans and stuff, just maybe like yeah. reevaluate and have a think. Then you go four years and then you go another four years. I suppose in, in some sense, it's better that you've done it the way that you have, because obviously where Olympics is every four years, you've, you'll be at the end of that cycle. Yeah. So at the end of it, you can say, okay, going into this next um, four year cycle, mm -hmm. dad, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Um, how do we go back to this? Like, how yeah. would you, how would you even alter your training to go back oh, to, I don't want doing, to, think about it. <laughs> to doing all that different training? Like how many days a week do you train at the moment? So at the moment I train, I think it's four, five days a week. Okay. Um, but the training is just so different. Like I used to train five days a week, but I would do so much in that mm -hmm. day. Um, yeah. Whereas now <clears throat> it's more just, some days I'll just do gym and like a short speed session. Some days I'll do just technical sessions. So although I am training a lot, mm -hmm. I'm not training for as long or doing as much. What sense. is gym like as a high jumper? Mm. What, what does it consist of? Um, what, what does your training consist of? 
just a lot of like fast explosive stuff mm-hmm. um a lot of, yeah basically just like all lower limb don't do any upper body okay so that's what when i go back i'm like oh god it's gonna be so hard <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll do like anything um so yeah that gym side of it's changed quite a lot but mm-hmm. um yeah just more just like explosive stuff really. okay so when you're doing the explosive stuff mm-hmm. um does that sometimes happen after you've done a track session or do you have like separate okay so monday's just gym yeah and then tuesday's just track and then wednesday it could be gym and track mm-hmm. is it kind of like that or um, does so it just vary yeah it kind of vary i mean gym's usually always after like a technical session mm-hmm. um not really sure why but that's just how <laughs> i mean i think i'd be dead if i tried to do a high gym session after gym have um, you tried it no because <laughs> i know i know um there are some athletes who do gym in the morning and then track in the evening yeah. or literally track straight off the gym yeah would that be something that you would look to try or do you know yourself well enough now that that's not going to be a thing <laughs> no i think to get the best out of both sessions i'd need to kind of do it the way i'm doing it okay um, yeah i don't know enough i'm just like you write the program i'll just i'll just do <laughs> I'll it just, i'll just, I'll just turn it off <laughs> like, you just tell me what i need to do I'll exactly get it done. what would be your favorite exercise in the gym then if it's all speed based effectively um it's not as speed based probably leg press i don't even know why i just just love it (laughs) okay so when you're doing leg press is it more like load up as much as you can and and get it out the way or yeah Yeah, that's basically what it is hammer it out we do a bit of both i mean towards like the competitive part of the season i'll do Mm -hmm. like fast light yeah explosive stuff and then in winter it's like that heavy as much you can put on it yeah go so how does (laughs) that that (laughs) how when you have those sessions uh-huh. like prior how do you get yourself ready for that is it is that another process you go through mentally or can mm-hmm. you just wake up and say all right cool i've got gym i'm gonna go and get it done um yeah with gym i think i can just kind of get into the gym do it mm-hmm. i think with technical high jump sessions that's really different mindset i need to almost get into that competitive side of it because i'm not that like, great at jumping in like in a non-competitive environment so i can't really because i'm jumping against myself yeah it's like it's (laughs) it's harder so do you have like a a set standard that you set yourself in training to say okay cool i need to work around this to Mm -hmm. then go higher yeah so i usually just have like a few technical points and then Mm -hmm. just work on those and jump higher because obviously every single session it's like i can jump high but if Mm -hmm. i don't know why i'm jumping high high. how i'm gonna jump higher yeah Yeah, exactly Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, working on the little technical bits. So have you got a training um, group? Well, <laughs> kind of. I mean, because I left my group kind of mid-season mm-hmm. um, and obviously it wasn't planned. Um, I did kind of drop my group then. Yeah. Um, and now I'm just training with my dad. Um, but this first part of the winter is just, just the grunt work, I guess. It's just getting, <laughs> getting all the work done to be able to jump. Um, but I will be jumping with people January. Yeah, because I just, I just, I think I used to see you in Birmingham mm-hmm. on yeah, yeah, the yeah. weekends when yeah, you were doing the Saturday. coaching classes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was always because you guys are always like trying to jump, and then there's like people in the background doing the coaching yeah. classes, throwing. Yeah, yeah. That was fun. Well. <laughs> Do when you're doing the winter training, mm-hmm. is there a mixture of it being outdoors and indoors, like jumps wise, or? is it all based off of like that time of the year so obviously when it gets cold so say like from next month yeah till maybe march yeah indoors and then you go outdoors or is it a nice mixture between um yeah all my jumping would be indoors okay. and then the rest of stuff's a bit of both okay um but luckily with high jump i'm not having to run that far so yeah. <laughs> after i've done like the first few weeks of like the longer runs um then it cuts down quite a bit so is that uh skip that, that, that that sounded like <laughs> yeah. the, the, the longer runs what's the long run for a high jumper because i know it because it varies quite yeah. quite a lot between any of the jump events yeah, yeah, so yeah. obviously for a long jumper and a triple jumper it's mm-hmm. quite speed based yeah and then maybe depending on who your coach is it could be 120s the max yeah. that you do sometimes it's as much as 300 yeah um for yourself what would it what would be a long session for you i think this year probably the max is going to be 200 250 something like that okay um i mean start winter i'll be doing like 20 minute runs mm-hmm. um and like longer like far leg sessions and stuff and then by the time i get to competing i'll be like 
60 meters max, which is speed. nice. Speed. Yeah, speed all speed you. based. But would that be in a high, in a high amount or quite short, snappy stuff? Quite sh- yeah. By the time I'm competing, it'll be quite short, snappy stuff. Um, then go back into harder training again. So I'll be doing 150s, 200s in like April time. Mm-hmm. Well, March, April time, depending on what I kind of end up doing indoors. Okay. Um, so yeah. Sounds cool. Sounds <laughs> Not cool. Too bad. Um, what was your? F- so you've been competing f- or been doing track and field since you were five. Yeah. Um, I think most things start around un- well, with the under 11 stuff mm-hmm. um first outdoor i assume would be under 13 yeah um when did you start getting the, the thought process for english schools southerns mm. um counties yeah um english kind of schools like backwards but yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't know work out how old how old are you in english schools uh, juniors as young as yeah so 15. 13 okay 13, yeah, 14 14 um yeah so my I think with me because my dad was my coach and I've always been in that kind of mindset where this is my career everything was quite yeah everything was quite serious from a young age I think that's why Mm -hmm. I did have that quite a lot of success at a young age because I was that far ahead in terms of like my training and my mindset and all that kind of stuff so I think my first English schools it was yeah it was a weird one I mean I won it which was great I did long jump um but like every morning, my dad made me do like circuits before breakfast. Like it was intense. Circuit. It wasn't like, so, oh my God. Your circuits were breakfast. Basically. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't like, oh, I'll go to English schools and see how I do. It was like, you're going to English schools. To win you're going to do well. Like, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was weird. I think that's why I feel like I've been in the sport for so long because it has been very serious from a very young age. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but that was, it was, I say it was really serious. It was fun as well. I mean, like English schools, UK school games, all the Southern champs, like. UK school games. Wow. UK school games is the best time yeah. ever. Wow, you're and taking that, it back some years. Yeah, <laughs> and that was the end of season as well. That was always in September time. Mm. So you've been on holiday, you're back, I think you're back at school. Yeah. yeah. And then you go yeah. away first for a week. Yeah. yeah, you're actually, but you are back at school. <laughs> yeah. By the time also, this is around. great. <laughs> Cause that's normally either the middle of September or towards like the end of September. Yeah. So, but. There was always good performances. Like mm. I always remember seeing it, and the performances were almost mirrored of like maybe um, England champs or something. Yeah. So, because a lot of people like go into it thinking, oh, whatever happens in my season, this day is just for me to enjoy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> people didn't really care, but they were just like, I'm just going to perform, and if I get PB, I don't obviously season. Yeah. Happy days. Exactly. So, did you go English schools every every year throughout your junior career? No, so I think I went to English schools twice. Okay. Or maybe three times. All those times I did long jump. Um, then the last time I did it was 2013, which was the same year as World Youth. Okay. Um, and I got, I think I got three no jumps. So that was, that was good. That was a good time. <laughs> English schools or? <laughs> Both. Oh. So, yes. Okay, talk us through that. So first international champs. Yeah. Three no jumps. Mm. That's got to be tough mentally. Yeah. Was yeah. your dad there at, for this competition? Yeah. So okay. I went as I went to World Juice for heptathlon. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think I was maybe ranked in the top. I think I was meant to get a medal that champs. Mm-hmm. Um, like it was all it was crazy. Like went to, went there. Everyone was like, "Oh, you're gonna win." Um, had like press conference and stuff. Like it was it was very intense. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, I was leading after day one, jump mm. 190 in the high jump at like, I think it was maybe 16 or 17. Um, yeah, it's like, and then jump. It's, <laughs> it's, it's fine, it happens. It happens. It's, it happens. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was like all mad. And then the next day, long jump, three no jumps, and that was mm-hmm. just over. Like, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't too great. <laughs> so having. Having gone in knowing that, okay, if I perform to the best of my abilities, I can Mm -hmm. get a medal and then that happens to you. Like, how did that affect you going forward? Like, did that kind of spur you on more or did Mm. you kind of like sit in the, in the dungeons for a bit of your your mind? (laughs) More circus training in the morning. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think it really, it affected me because I almost felt like I did it to myself because Mm -hmm. I'd shown like a few weeks before English schools, I've done the same thing and then I hadn't really learned from it. I've been, oh, okay, cool, pushed it aside and then did the same thing again, mm-hmm. um, which was hard. And then obviously having all that pressure 
from other people, from like the media and from like yeah. the team and stuff. And then extra pressure for myself, my family and everything. I think it was all a lot. Yeah. Um, and then the next year I had World Juniors. Um, and the same thing was like, kind of happening again, had a really good high jump, mm -hmm. like everything was going well. Then long jump the next day and I was like, this needs to go well. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, I couldn't even think about anything else. All I was thinking about was like, if this, if this long jump goes well, then the rest of it's gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. um, and then luckily it did, I didn't jump amazingly, but like I got points. So yeah, that's, yeah, all, yeah, that's, that's all that matters. I mean, I suppose you get to that point where it's like, you know what, the last few times that I've done this at majors has not been great for me. Yeah. But you know, if I get, something mm -hmm. is better than nothing yeah, <laughs> yeah. but Something on the board. at the same time yeah. i suppose you mentally you're still like but i still need something mm -hmm. decent because yeah. i need this amount of points to stay in that position yeah. so with all those things going on uh -huh. your brain must be firing like crazy <laughs> yeah at that everywhere point in time um yeah but you won mm -hmm. so off the back of that did things start to change for you track and field wise because obviously yeah. Um, sponsors start hollering uh -huh. and, and then you get interviews here you get interviews there like when did it start becoming more of a big thing and you started noticing your free time okay. start doing <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah that was that was mad that champs was it was such like such good championships I mean mm -hmm. Oregon was amazing yeah um, the team was so good as well like we had a really good really strong team a few medals um, and like yeah everything about the champs was, was really good and then I think after obviously I think I signed with Nike either that year or the year before, mm -hmm. um, who have like really helped my career. Um, and yeah, just so many different things happening. I think I was so young. Mm. Uh, I think I was, yeah, I must've been 17. And I'd yeah, achieved so much. And then I think a couple of years later, it all kind of hit me and I was like, whoa. What was that? Uh, <laughs> May I have your attention please? A fire has been reported. Please leave the building immediately. Oh my god. <laughs> hey guys, apologies. <laughs> we had a fire alarm, which wasn't actually a fire alarm. So we had to leave, come back. That's why I'm changing. <laughs> There's now Jack. Oh, Jack, 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 Jack. Um, yeah, so picking up where we left off, we were talking about um, sponsors and how it affected um, Morgan's life going forward. Mm. So, uh, Morgan, would you please carry on? Um, even if we backtrack a little bit, yeah, it's yeah. fine. Um, so yeah, after Oregon, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was like that whole like season was so mad. I went to yeah. IWF awards, went to like sports personality, like went to so many different things, which I just never even thought I'd be, be at. Mm -hmm. Um, got Red Bulls, a sponsor, Nike, like everything was just mad, to be okay. honest. I think I put a lot of expectation on myself after that. I was like, yeah. cause I've won it like at 17. So when the next one comes around in 2016, like I'm gonna win that. And then I'm gonna like get an Olympic. I think in my head, I was like, right, okay. Stage like, one complete, stage mm -hmm. two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was like, I think that's the thing about, um, like when you're younger, you just like PB every single week mm -hmm. and everything's just so easy because you're like, okay, cool. Just do a little bit of harder training and then that next thing will happen, next thing will happen and it gets to a stage where it's like, that's not always going to be how how the track is. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's taken me a few years to kind of actually be happy with, so I jumped one ninety four this year, mm -hmm. um, which is the same jump I jumped in 2014. And like yeah. when I jumped it this year, I was so happy, whereas Anyone looking at that could be like, yeah, but she jumped there when she was 17. Like, she should be better than that now. Um, but yeah, it's just such like a process. That's that's um, a question I had for mm. you as well. I mean, it's so hard, like with the field events, because yeah. to some people, like a centimeter increase is nothing. Yeah. But to field athletes, like, yo, you don't understand yeah. how hard uh -huh. I've had to train for this. So when you do have those performances that aren't, you know, okay, so one like one ninety seven is your PB. Yeah. So for you, anything from one ninety, let's say one ninety four, mm -hmm. is would you consider that as a good performance yeah. or, you know, yeah, yeah, not definitely. The, um, it's not what you're looking for. Yeah, it's it's hard one because obviously you go out every competition, you you want to be your best, you want to PB, yeah. um, which is not always going to happen. So anything over ninety, I'm like, okay, that's solid. Like, yeah. well, I would say ninety is like a bad day, okay. but I'm still happy. It's like on that yeah. edge. <laughs> okay. um, and then yeah, 94, 95, 96, like I'd be really happy with some of those jumps. So yeah, yeah it is hard because 
And I think people just think, oh, you can just go out there and jump 90 or any other day. And it's like, yeah, but you have to train so hard to kind of get to that point anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and just that little centimeter is just a difference. Like you can change so much just to get a centimeter. It's, yeah. What's it's the mad. biggest um, height you've come into a competition? Like, have you ever mm. decided like, okay, I'm going to come in at 180. Like, um, if you were obviously full of confidence and yeah. you knew you could do it, would you ever come in at such a high height? Uh, she's coming in at 193, bro. <laughs> yeah, 197. <laughs> at 197. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Winning the competition right now. I know, imagine, like, your oh, first job, bad. just <laughs> go into it and just go, yeah? Nah. Winning jump. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I usually, I usually come in at 180. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like... Yeah, most comps. And then I think the highest will probably come in is like 182, mm-hmm. maybe 85 actually. Okay. Um, so yeah, probably. Is he all, do you always like feel like, okay, you know what? Or do you plan that before the competition? Mm. Or do you go to the competition and then go, I'm feeling very well. Yeah. So I'm going to go come into it later. I- yeah, it kind of depends what competition it is. I think if the bar's starting lower mm-hmm. and I've got like, <clears throat> maybe like 45 minutes to an hour before I even come in. I'm going to yeah. come in a bit lower just to get a jump done and then and get warm. <laughs> warm into it. Yeah. Is it hard? Because like, mm. depending on where the, the starting point is, is it quite hard having that whole, you've warmed up. Yeah. I don't know how long you warm. It's so say 45 minutes yeah, yeah, yeah. you've warmed up and then you, then you go and warm up again because yeah. you need to get your steps right, make sure yeah. everything's correct. And then sitting down. Like, what do you do in that time mm-hmm. to keep yourself active, to keep your muscles from falling asleep? Yeah. Um, yeah, what's it like for you on the infield? Yeah, it's it's weird because your core room, say I'm competing at like five o'clock, so my core room will be at four. Mm-hmm. I'll stop warm for three. Mm-hmm. And it's like two hours before I've even like Start started a competition yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think just like energy levels, caffeine levels, all that is really important as well. Because yeah. I could do my warm up, have the best warm up ever, and then get out there and my energy's just dropped and mm-hmm. then I'm kind of just like on that level. I've been to like waiting around as well. Can, Cause mm-hmm. I've never, well, I'm a sprinter, so I've never had to do that. Yeah. But I've seen a lot, obviously, the long jump, um, the pole voters do it yeah, a lot. Like, pole voters take it all day. <laughs> yeah. But I can't imagine just waiting there and waiting for other people to compete, uh-huh. knowing, okay, I'm not even jumped yet. Yeah. Like, do you just watch everyone or do you just like try and compose yourself and play music? Yeah, I try and... Or listen I th- to podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I think I used to just be so like involved in the competition and just mm-hmm. while I'm waiting, just watch everyone and just have a chat and just not yeah. really kind of get out of like my head a little bit. Um, whereas now like the bigger competitions, it's almost like as soon as it starts, I'm coming in because 180 is probably the height that everyone would start at. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think like domestic competitions, I'd just try and not get too involved in the competition and maybe start my warm up a bit later. Mm-hmm. It's like when the early heights are on, I start warming up a little bit more then, um, yeah. just kind of like keeping active. So yeah, it depends, depends on the competition. How tense is the call room for, I mean, I assume it's quite tense for mm-hmm. every event, but you know, like you hear some stories where like the sprinters call room, like it's like a war zone in there. Oh, that's so different and to field, yeah. 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 No, no, one's, it, no one smiles like, in the sprints as well. Yeah. <laughs> like, you make friends along the way as well. Yeah. Like, when you compete against people five or six times throughout the year, mm-hmm. I assume that you get talking to them and it becomes yeah. a little bit easier. When you're in the cool room, are you speaking with them or are you still kind of like, nah, for right now, where I've just finished one more I'm going to take some time. Yeah. And then maybe when we get on the infield, I might say hello. Yeah. I might give you a little bit of a conversation. Yeah, I think the cool room's quite, the cool room's chill because everyone's mm-hmm. like, I've got at least an hour before I even start competing again. I've done my yeah. warm up. Like, what am I going to do in this time? I'm mm-hmm. not going to just be stressed and like just have all that. <laughs> energy so yeah the quorum is quite nice because what was it like for your first olympics that's actually yeah because you were quite young yeah and going into it were you the youngest i was youngest in the gb team i'm not sure i was the youngest high jump there no there's a few yeah because like i would have been obviously getting in there and going like okay i know where you are i know where you are (laughs) i've seen you on tv for so long yeah and being in the same call room as them Mm -hmm. because i would i would have guessed you probably have come in earlier that you would have yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was really weird. I mean, 
I saw Blank of Lassic was in my like little call room. I sat next to her and I was like, this is so <laughs> weird. Like I was such a fangirl. At people in my competition, I was like, right, I can't, I can't even think of this. I have to compete way. against these people. Um, so that was so weird. I think I spent the whole Olympics just walking around like, this is, this is mad. Like, this not is like realizing that everyone else look at you that way as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I would have fanboyed the whole way through. I mean, it's crazy. Back way back when, when I used to come here and, and train, we're at Valley, by the way, guys. Um, <laughs> I caught wind of like Tyson Gay being here, and me and my coach, we were coming here to train anyway. I could not have got out the car any oh. faster <laughs> to go and try and meet this guy. And it so happened that he was coming out as I was coming in, no and I was just, oh my god, you're Tyson Gay! <laughs> Can I get a picture with you? <laughs> And, you know, like, that will always stick with me as just how excited I was to see him. So I can imagine, and I was probably around the same age you are, was then, when you was at the Olympics. And I was just at Lee Valley, but you being at the Olympics, that must have been, like, amazing, because you're around everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, All different sports as well. Olympic Village as well, like... like yeah. Being in that little environment, I would have had my phone out. I would have just been snapping. <laughs> hey, listen, Usain Bolt could have been over there, and I'm like, <laughs> I remember there was a point where was, I think it was Usain Bolt's birthday, and because mm. his, I don't know what like how the village was set up. Anyway, there was like loads of people outside of his room just like yeah. singing happy birthday to him, mm-hmm. and I was like, this is like you're Olympians and you're singing like it was just <laughs> mad because mm. these are famous people's uh, just all so <laughs> weird. Like everyone's just fan on the side everyone. of being famous. Do you get stopped in the street and like, oh my God, you're Morgan Lake. Like, do you have that? Um, I have a couple of times. I think it's more like if there's a champs on, people mm-hmm. are interested in athletics. They've yeah. seen people and then two months later, they're like, <laughs> don't know who that is. <laughs> so I think that's the thing with athletics. It's kind of like waves. Okay. Um, so if you went out in the street now, you yeah. could walk down the road and be, and yeah. be fine. Easily. Sure? Yeah. Okay, I'll, we, might sure. test, we might have to test this. Very sure. We might, yeah. test, this. <laughs> Very we might, sure. we might test this. I, I don't know. We'll see how we're feeling um, as it goes on. Um, being that you were so young and you're still quite young, um, mm. are you still in uni? Yes. So. <laughs> kind of. Ballet. Kind of. Okay. I mean, I have what, been to uni. What's kind of? Um, no, so I am still in uni. So I'm in my third year. Okay. Um, studying. Studying psychology. Okay. So, but I think in my head, I'm like, okay, cool. I think from school and stuff, <clears throat> it, I always found it a lot easier to give myself a lot of stress yeah. and then perform. I think it was almost, I had to have a, re- I couldn't just go and do my homework. Like I had to do mm. it last minute Fast when I'm being forced. Like You actually do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that's how I got my best results. And I think I've stupidly gone into uni with that mindset as well. So mm-hmm. I'm like, right, I'll just like, Pie everything up and then do it all at once. So, how's that working for you? <laughs> it's working great. <laughs> I should have learned. Um, but yeah, no, I, it's a good distraction as well. Like, I do really enjoy psychology. Mm-hmm. So, I think learning about that and then, like, also kind of seeing how it goes on the track and stuff, that really helps me as well. Does the uni accommodate for you? Obviously, being an athlete, mm-hmm. um, I can imagine the psychology t- um, lecturers must be like loving it, just knowing that like, you are competing at that level uh-huh. and having to come into some of your assignments to them. <laughs> yeah. The Do you use you SPSS? Oh, unfortunately, <laughs> I hate that thing. I it's hate like, that so much. Imagine Excel like mm-hmm. on steroids. Honestly, like it's, <laughs> it's the worst it. piece of equipment ever. You guys, you guys can show me afterwards. <laughs> you guys can um, show me what it looks like. Because I can imagine like you going in, obviously psychology links heavily to your sport yeah do they ever want to like have a conversation with you about things like that or do they just um i think because i'm a loughborough and a lot of there's like a lot of a lot of athletes athletes, athletes. um and a lot of things like in my lectures will be brought back to sport as well Mm -hmm. uh, even though it's like not a sports sports degree um it's almost like everyone in your lecture, like you wouldn't go in normal clothes for a lecture, like that is weird. Like if I rocked up in jeans, all my friends would be like, ooh, like what are you, why are you dressing up? Like, yeah, right. <laughs> literally everyone's in trackies, uh, everyone's in sports kit, like it's, it's cool. It's very oh, chill. That sounds quite relaxed. <laughs> that sounds quite relaxed. It's very, I think it's I would, very chill. I will be using that to the, to the most, I'll be coming in my socks and my sliders. <laughs> Maybe come with my, my bathrobe and just chill. My like, bathrobe. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, are they quite lenient towards mm. you where they know that you could be flying out here, there and everywhere to 
maybe do a photo shoot or to mm -hmm. go and do training. How does that work with you and them? Um, they are really lenient. Like they're really good about it. I think because we've had so many top level athletes come through come mm -hmm. through the uni, they know how to kind of help the athlete and the student at the same time. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. All my like all my lectures are recorded so if i have to be in a different country i can still watch it yeah um sometimes you get extensions but that's kind of you don't really get extensions it's just major <laughs> major circumstances you would um i haven't had one yet like obviously to go going into the olympics yeah. like they'll give you an extension yeah yeah if you're like, like, oh, you're like, competing this day, like no you have to do this exam like they will they will be lenient to a point right. um but yeah no it's good like obviously being a um like the track and the lectures are two minute walk away. Like yeah. everything's pretty easy and set up for you. Yeah. What time did you used to train? Oh, well, did you, you train at Loughborough at a time? Yeah. What time did you used to train? Cause I know there's a group at like 6.30. Yeah, not that group. <laughs> <laughs> um, I used to train at nine, so. Yeah, I always wasn't too, too early. I wasn't too early. Nine Cause I know a lot of the spring early. group, yeah. Nine in the morning. Mm. I love the spring group train like 6.30, 6 o'clock yeah, in the morning, which is, <laughs> I've been up asleep. <laughs> I couldn't do that. Which do you, which do you prefer? Because obviously you're starting out in the sport, I assume most of your training would have been in the evening because you're yeah. at school yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and whatever. Um, now as an adult, would you mm. still prefer to do that? Or do you like doing like the early sessions or like a midday session? I prefer the early sessions because mm -hmm. I like getting up, getting it, not just getting it done, but like, because it's more of like a job now whereas before I wouldn't say it's a job like I still love it still like mm -hmm. all that but before it was like yeah I have school and then I do athletics in the afternoon in the evening mm -hmm. um, whereas now it's like yeah I wake up this is what I want to do and then, and then kind of get it done to yeah but the hard thing about this year because Doha everything was so late yeah. um, like I think my most of my rounds were, well, I did one, but the thing <laughs> was at like eight. Um, so all my training going into it was in the evening. Mm -hmm. So I found that really hard because I had oh, to- Oh, to try and adapt to your yeah, condition. Yeah, how there. it's going to be out there. So all day I was just kind of waiting around for the session. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you get your session over and done with, it's like, right, I've got the rest of the day to do everything I need to do. So yeah. I think I prefer the morning, but I probably should start getting towards the evenings a bit more. Okay, sure. well, I suppose it helps because at least you know which one your body's going to mm. prefer at that time. Yeah. Um, how hot was it in training in Doha? It's like, it's the, whole, the maddest heat ever. And the whole air conditioning thing yeah. in the stadium. Yeah. Like, I want to I wanna hear about that because I heard there was a lot of, some people were loving it, some yeah. people were hating it. Um, what was your take? So oh. it wasn't really the heat that was that bad. Like it was more the humidity. So mm -hmm. as soon as you stepped outside, you would just feel it instantly. Mm -hmm. You couldn't just like wait around outside. If it's like waiting for a taxi or whatever, five minutes you'd be <laughs> done. Like that's too much to stand <laughs> under that heat. Um, but the thing is what they did well was they had an indoor track where you could warm up. Mm -hmm. So I did all my, all my training and warm up indoors. Then you'd go outside for like five minutes to walk to the uh, call room, get in the mm -hmm. call room, which is all air conditioned, mm -hmm. get to the stadium, it's air conditioned. So there was not one point I was like, oh, I'm too hot, oh, I've lost my energy. Like they actually did that really well. Were they far apart in terms of like the um, warm up area call room to the stadium? Was it far apart mm -hmm. or were they quite close? Pretty close. I mean, it's, yeah, about a five minute walk between oh, the okay. warm up and the call room. So. so by the time you get, yeah, oh my God, I'm so hot. Yeah. So <laughs> get me a towel. Honestly. <laughs> training wasn't fun though. Cause we had our training camp in Dubai mm -hmm. and that was, yeah. cr that was so hot. Like, I was not, I was not expecting it. Like even though our sessions were all in the evening, mm -hmm. um, we get to track about six and still by then it was, yeah, after like a lap, you're just you're, you're just dying. Like yeah. someone get like, my, <laughs> someone get my water now. I need an asthma pump. I'm just dying. Oh, I, was, I felt so bad for the endurance runners. They had like yeah, ice they, towels on them. They pretty much had to like go outside. Like yeah, where would they? Where would they you, you know when yeah. you think to yourself, ah, oh, it's hot indoors. I'm gonna walk outside and cool down. It's yeah. like no, yeah. completely <laughs> opposite. It's like no, I'm gonna go inside Honestly. and sit down cool and try. Down. And try avoid That's going so outside weird. for the next oh well like half if it does go to um to the malls in dubai you just like yeah <laughs> just literally you can just do. go from your house in the car mall yeah. <laughs> you literally didn't walk outside it at all crazy. in your in your spare time while you was out there like mm -hmm. what did you do like when you weren't training obviously you've, uh, i assume you've got friends like within yeah, the team yeah. and stuff so how did you guys spend your time 
nothing too exciting to be honest i think just like catching up chatting mm. um reading i mean the hard thing about training in the evenings and competing in the evenings is that you can't waste too much energy in the day yeah um so a lot of napping <laughs> i think meal times <laughs> is when everyone everyone's like getting to meal times and that's when you like chat for ages because that's when everyone there wasn't really a space where you could just kind of like chill together mm -hmm. so at meal times you people would be sat there for ages and chatting so yeah nothing too exciting <laughs> so on um, another topic would be the crowd in dubai mm. oh, in doha in doha, <laughs> in doha. <laughs> in doha. Um, what was that like for your experience yeah. uh, obviously we read if we've seen what the media said and mm -hmm. we were watching it on tv as well but how did you find But. um yeah so for my for my event i kind of got out i think i was on the first day so I got yeah. out there and usually if it's the first day first first session it's not going to be packed anyway mm -hmm, yeah. um qualifying rounds no one's really that interested in it um so I was like, okay fair enough uh, i wasn't expecting a big crowd so mm -hmm. that was fine it's more qualifying it's just you just focus on the event get your job done and then the finals when you then hope for that atmosphere um so I kind of didn't really think much about it. And then the next day when the hundreds were on, um, I was like, the crowd is still empty. Like, <laughs> where is everyone? And then obviously for, for the final, there was still no one. Mm -hmm. um, and it was weird because I spoke to other, like a few people who in Doha and I was like, are you gonna go and watch the championships? And they're like, can't get there. I was like, oh, okay, why? They're like, the traffic's too bad. And I just thought, it's just so strange. I was like, people from their own country can't go and watch the championships because, because the traffic's the too bad around the stadium, but there was no one in this. Like, it just didn't, like, nothing was adding up. It was They'd just weird. They probably off, like, a lot of roads <laughs> leading yeah, they to must it. Have done. So they were like, well, you know, if I've got a park two yeah. miles away from I'm the track, I ain't, I ain't walking two miles from my park in this heat. In that heat as well. Like, That's, no. I mean, that might be a thing. That actually yeah. might be yeah. why um, it was. And then when they realized, okay, well, we're not making we any sales. Let's just open it up and yeah. But then I'd assume that a stadium that big would have a car park, a car park, <laughs> like on the ground or something. Yeah. <laughs> but then they might want to keep that space for the athletes. Yeah, I don't know. It was just it was just weird. Like everything else around the championships was, I think, quite well done. Um, maybe apart from like the timings, events, and stuff. But the organization wise was quite good. Um, but yeah, having no one in the stadium was it was weird because you didn't really feel the impact of the event. So mm -hmm. when I was there. Obviously, it's World Championships, it's huge, but with no one there, no one's really taking much interest in it. It's weird. Mm -hmm. And then I came home. Um, I came home early, and what I think came home when the heptathlon was on. Yeah. Um, and saw how big it was over here. Like it was on all the newspapers. Yeah. Like BBC coverage was so good. Um, and the stadium started filling up. And I was like, okay, now it's a World Championships. <laughs> like it's so weird. The first half was like, oh, this is like end of season kind of competition that's yeah. going out. Um, and then by the time the end championships, it was amazing. So yeah, because I mean, it was literally like from the third or fourth day onwards yeah. that it started yeah. to fill up. And then by the last day, it was like, oh, so there are people here. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we could like somehow reverse time and just pull these people back to the yeah. beginning and then hold it the whole way through. That would have been so much better. But mm. I mean, yeah, I suppose it was a bit of a downer at the yeah. beginning. But track you, and, track and field has that. Do you want to see any events yourself? Um, so I was out there for, oh, I think it was the men's triple jump and the women's pole vault was on the same time. Mm -hmm. I think that was like a couple of days after I competed. Um, and it was empty, like still empty. And they wouldn't let us get to the other side of the stadium where the triple jump was. So everyone was trying to like crowd around and get to watch the triple jump because like, there was nothing else on. Oh, yeah. And um, so we were like, okay, try and snuck down to where like the media zone was mm -hmm. and Mike Powell was there. And it was like empty and they asked Mike Powell to move. We're like, how are you asking <laughs> Mike, the world record holder to move from an empty seat into another empty seat? Like it made no sense. Because they probably didn't realize who he was. But no, true. I was going to say like, as an athlete, do you have seats allocated yeah. where you can yeah. sit? Or yeah, was it yeah. just, you know? You do, but I think with Do like you so we when was it? In London, like mm -hmm. it was full every single day. Mm -hmm. Um and you had allocated seats and to be fair, it was quite hard to kind of get around if you didn't want to sit there and move somewhere else. Yeah. Um like a few people could do it, but it was hard to get like masses of people around. So that's fair enough. But when it's an empty stadium yeah. and you're trying to get into a different block, it's like it shouldn't really be. 
that difficult, but. Because obviously in the um, British trials, you get like a pass that allows mm-hmm. you to go into certain areas. Yeah. And shouldn't it just be that for athletes, really? Because you could just move into that little long jump area on yeah. the home straight. Like, it's really. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just all athletes just watch and sit down, well, in the triple jump area, because that's what we like the best place to see mm-hmm. if you're watching the Andre the two any event. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was it was a weird it was a weird chance. But yeah, by the end of it it was amazing. So in a stadium strange. like that, it must be hard to generate any sort of like clapping to to get yourself going. I can't yeah. remember if you did, but at any point was that did you do that during the champs? Was it something that you thought about or um I did think about it in my third attempt, but I didn't mm-hmm. In the end, to be fair, I didn't actually realize how empty it was until after the competition. Mm-hmm. Until I went on Twitter and everyone's like, "Oh, the stadium's empty," and I was, I was like, "Oh, yeah, it was actually. It was, <laughs> it was really empty." And then obviously the next few days, because we were watching like the coverage out there, yeah, um, and it wasn't even on like Doha TV. Like someone had to stream it from from somewhere else. Like it was, it was so weird. Get the Wi-Fi, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get the Wi-Fi up, push it here, and yeah, it was. It was weird. It was like in in the country. It was big. Like there were there were ads up everywhere, but mm-hmm. actually on TV you can you couldn't find it. Um, that's strange. Yeah, it was. But then saying really that strange. sometimes that's that's what it's like with here as well. Like there's only um, a few events that I mean, if it's a diamond league, sure, yeah. all all up like where you can find it. But then yeah. when it's like a, maybe a world challenge or something, yeah, you sometimes got to dig real yeah, deep. Yeah, I don't know how you finding that. To, to find sometimes that. diamond league is only on iPlayer. Like yeah. you have to literally look for it yeah. to be able to watch it most yeah. of the time anyway. So it's like you should technically be that BBC free or shove it on there somewhere yeah. on live TV, you know, because they're re- they're actually good events. Yeah. But everyone only focus on Olympics every four years mm-hmm. or every year. With the, well, I think this is the first time the World Championship has been focused on anyway. So yeah. I feel like it's getting better. Yeah, it's but getting better. It needs. I think it's only getting better because of social media, though. Because yeah. there's a lot of controversies that's that have been coming through. And I think that's why it's sort of getting slowly, people are getting involved because there's more, <laughs> there's more controversy. Well, there's controversy. Yeah. <laughs> <By> people. <That's laughs> yeah, there's more controversy <laughs> all over it. So it's quite it's quite interesting to see, like, obviously from yourself and mm-hmm. every other athlete, that how do they find that, like, going into it and thinking, I'm going to go to a stadium that has no people. Yeah. Why is this? Why is this I mean, a major event for me? In, you know, in some respects, I suppose it's kind of like when you're competing, you can only beat who's there, mm-hmm. and you can only um, entertain who's in the stadium. Yeah. So, I suppose for some athletes, they will look and be like, you know, I don't care if there's five people in here, I'm still gonna go and do yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. But some people also they use the crowd to the advantage. Yeah. Some people like people watching them mm-hmm. and then performing. That's some people don't. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so obviously yeah, you get... It's, it's a catch-22. Some people can be great in, in like smaller domestic competitions and then when they get out there onto the bigger stuff, it's like, oh, okay. Mm. Didn't didn't really think about this the yeah. whole way through. I think it's a weird one. I think sometimes you don't even notice in mm-hmm. the competition that there's no one there. And then as soon as the competition like hots up, then that's when you want the crowd involved. That's when you just like get the excitement over and done with. But I think yeah. in the qualifying and qualifying rounds and stuff, most of the time people won't go out there to watch like the 100 heats and stuff. They'll go out yeah. there to watch the final. So I think for the first couple of days, it was like, okay, fair enough. But then when people were not watching the 100 meter final, that was the bit where I was like, what? <laughs> so strange. But. I mean, I was sitting there with, um, I was with some of my boys mm-hmm. to watch the final and we were just like, we were watching the race. Yeah. Like, the stadium's so empty, like, what's going yeah. on? But, like I said, I mean, you can only entertain who's there, and at the end of the day, you're there to do a job, mm-hmm. regardless of if there's 10 people in the stadium or 100,000 yeah. people. At the end of the day, if I cross that line first place, I've yeah, you're still world champion for life. Like, <laughs> I'm world champion for the next two years. It doesn't matter if 10,000 people watch you or one person. So, so yeah. yeah. So, it's not, it's not so bad. But then, do you not find that we have that a lot here when it mm-hmm. comes to... British tramp, Brit- uh, British champs. Yeah. <laughs> so for, I suppose for us, sometimes it's not as big as a thing if you see a stadium empty because yeah. you you notice it quite a lot. Like that whole other side of the stadium is is just covered with with sheets and stuff. Yeah. And then... okay, I mean, we have more crowd in the English schools 
Yeah. <laughs> like, gen- like, we generally do. But then that's because they've got what? And diamond legs. Eight yeah, or, I like... Eight or nine different counties all up in the stadium and each each county has at least 50 free tickets, tickets in there. man free tickets to the yeah. kids so i think like, free tickets like yeah. so like yeah. giving us free yogurt in the stands i don't really i'm not bothered but then, do <laughs> you you think i'm giving out free yogurts constantly do you only give it to kids <laughs> what do you only give the tickets to kids i think i think yeah because if you want to make your sport better and last longer it's probably realistic to give it to school kids Mm. Like obviously you can give it to coaches as well. Like mm. obviously there's other coaches out, out there that have worked for years and stuff. They could also give, but realistically to kids, because if you bring a kid, it's free ticket. Their parents pay for one. <laughs> their parents, like, they're supposed yeah. to pay for one, or their club gets a mini bus to get everyone else involved as well. For every every ticket that that parent buys, we'll give you two free kids. Yeah, to <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that uh, could work. That could work. Like the next one, obviously, next year is in Manchester. Have you ever competed in Manchester before? Yeah. Before the free plays. I can't remember. What it was. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I probably. That. Like that's where it is now. It's not as big, but it's wider. Mm. Like it's just a massive like circle. So I don't know how people are gonna feel for that because it's just I think it's three seats. It's about three or four seats up, I can't and then remember. it just—it's so only one floor. Like personally, I'm not really a fan of Manchester, but you know, I—I I would much prefer it to be. I think they should make use of the uh, Olympic Stadium. Yeah, I think they should make. Oh, that'd be amazing. Of, they I remember Crystal Palace, like going to watch Crystal Palace Diamond League. Crystal Palace was that one. was the best competition ever. Like ever watching. I remember, all I remember watching is Christine, Christine and Goldie mm-hmm. Sayers. Like when I was younger and. Like having those stars in London, like, mm. well, it could be anywhere in, in the country, to be honest. Yeah. But be able to see that and actually having a full stadium with fireworks and like, but, that was just yeah. so exciting. Crystal Palace was just, I don't know why. There was I don't know why. It was like magic. Crystal Palace like, that was amazing. It was sick. One of the times I went, um, I was on the back straight and this was when they still had like spa sprints. Mm. So this was like 2006, 2007. And then the next time I went, um i remember bolt dropped to uh 59 in the two just cruising and i was just and i was in i was like near the finish line and i was like yo this atmosphere is just so good yeah, and they used nice. to hold like southerns there as well and southerns yeah. always churned mm-hmm. out amazing performances right. at crystal palace yeah. and you know now it's kind of like yeah summers is on Oh, where is it? Lee Valley. Oh, I'll pass. <laughs> no, no disrespect, guys. No, <laughs> dis- no disrespect to you guys. I love you lot, but you know, I think it that also does play a massive part in people coming, mm. like where it's gonna be. So if yeah, it's in okay. Manchester, are people gonna travel that? Far? Yeah, that's that's the question. That, that's the worry I have. I was like, are people down gonna... south going to travel? Mm-hmm. Hours but then there's also that question of people from like Newcastle that come all the way to Birmingham and stuff. Like yeah. they always have to do that trip. Yeah. I suppose if you're interested, you'll make the effort. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I genuinely feel like if you say, oh, it's in London, people automatically be like, oh, London, I can go do this, I yeah. can go do this, I can go do this. Because a lot of people just come for the weekend yeah. rather yeah. than yeah. just like an event. Because <laughs> you go to Manchester, what are you going to do in Manchester? No offense, man. I, I'm from Liverpool, so <laughs> before any, man, any Manchester people, like, go and watch the football game, it's fine. <laughs> do you do like school visits? Do you visit schools and stuff and and have mm-hmm. talks to the kids. What's what's it like? It, I haven't done that many. Mm-hmm. But when I've done them, I've like always loved them. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's always nice going back to schools. I went, I went to like so many schools when I was younger. I think mm-hmm. I went to like maybe like five or six schools. So when my old school were like, oh, do you want to come back? I'm like, oh, I don't actually know. Like I've been mm-hmm. to, I haven't actually been back to my old school to talk. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been to like schools like around my area and stuff. Um, yeah, it's it's so weird. I mean, I was like talk to the kids and like have stuff, and then afterwards they'll get like millions. Of inst- they won't really interact that much when you're there, and mm-hmm. then afterwards you just have so many messages on like Instagram and Twitter <laughs> and stuff. But it's so weird because you forget that like when I was young, I if I saw someone that was that was it. Like I get their autograph and that was it. Whereas yeah. now you can actually interact with people. Try. And, like, yeah. So try many, so many questions. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Try to interact with them. <laughs> but it's really cool. Like I think that side of it's really cool. Yeah. So I got a question for you on that side of things. Like mm. how do you ba- cause you only have one Instagram as far as I'm aware. How do you mm. balance like having, you know, all the questions from like all the um the fans and stuff and yeah. then 
like some of your general friends, but they might not have uh-huh. like, you know, personal contact to get in touch with you. Yeah. How do you balance like going through that list? <laughs> it's not that long. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, just scrolling every day. I mean, if I go on to your thing now, I'm pretty sure uh, I'll see like 29 point something, something followers. That's quite a lot. Uh, <laughs> and um, DMs are there, it's a lot yeah. of stuff. No, it's, I think it's one of those things like you have to properly engage with it now. Mm-hmm. Whereas like you can make a lot of, not a lot of money off Instagram, but like you can build your brand up, build mm-hmm. yourself as an athlete on social media and stuff, which is which is quite cool. Um, and also just like talking to people, like I'll have a lot of time to talk to like young athletes because yeah. that's what I would have loved as a young athlete myself. And I know speaking to yeah, like older athletes when I was when I was their age mm-hmm. um, meant so much to me and like kind of kept me in the sport as well. Yeah, um, which is cool. On that, um, so one question I'll ask you is do you get a lot of people like messaging you saying oh i think you could do this and this would this would help with your training and blah 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 do you get a lot of that i don't but i know a lot of athletes that do okay like a cool. lot of people just get like told things by people and like where have you got this information from like do you know google. my training prior google. yeah true google you yeah, can, google's you can, <laughs> listen you can find a whole training prep on, okay. on google i've seen people um come and say yeah, I saw so and so do this, and I want to do this, and it's like, yeah, yeah, but that doesn't work with what we have planned now. Yeah. Oh, but I still want to try. It. All right, yeah. go for it. That was you like that it. was me when I was younger. Though. I used to like giggle. What does Jessica Ennis eat? What does she do? <laughs> <laughs> like every two minutes. Um, I'm gonna go on that in a in a second, but um, you mentioned like people um, potentially like dropping out early and stuff. Mm-hmm. Over here, once they kind of reach under twenties is when like for females it starts filtering out where not, yeah. um, not as many people are still coming through the ranks mm-hmm. um what kept you in it and what do you think would help keep other female athletes in the sport past on the 20 mm-hmm. stage um i think i was quite lucky in a sense like i said it before like i've always known i wanted to do athletics and i've mm-hmm. always known that was like my career path um so i didn't really find it too hard to kind of keep motivated um obviously like with results you're going to be motivated anyway to like go to the next stage. Yeah. Um, but I had a lot of like training partners and people I competed against who were at the same level and yeah. did still drop out. Um, mm-hmm. And I guess a lot of that was from like funding, um, that uni and just having to think of a different path. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and it's that, I guess that passion as well. Like I had a like training partner who was absolutely amazing. Like she could have, like been one of the best but just didn't really apply themselves uh not apply themselves like well didn't really have that that drive to mm-hmm. kind of like stay in right, there's no names or never know no, no names. About. Uh, that was wrong anyway um yeah it's like almost like sometimes they don't know how good they are mm-hmm. and they haven't got i think there's a lot more role models now yeah um like i would say like some of the biggest probably the biggest stars at the moment in british athletics are are female mm-hmm. um which is good um yeah i guess I didn't really know what could help it. I was thinking about that earlier. Like, I don't actually know what could keep people in the sport. I guess it's just... Do you think if... um, I think it's probably the thing with the education system because Mm -hmm. a lot of people, it's when they get to college and you go, oh, I've got this work to do. I finished college at like four. I'm not going to training again. Yeah. And then go to sleep, do my assignment, you know, trying to find that balance in your work life mm-hmm. and social life I, yeah so now like people having social life is quite important yeah, so definitely. if you're training five times a week you know social life is very very limited and then yeah. when you're off it's probably be like you're doing your work or yeah. you're revising and stuff so i think it's just about finding that balance mm. in it because i do know a lot of girls that have quit yeah. and but they still love the sport. Yeah. But at the yeah, same time, because they can't see themselves. It's sort of, yeah, it's sort of like, like you said, they did drive. They can't see themselves going to the next stage. Mm-hmm. And even though they have the ability to, yeah. but they can't physically say, you can't force someone. What I no, exactly. the coach is, you can't yeah. really change someone's mindset in that way. Because you said you had your dad, you had all these people around yeah, you. Yeah, I had a lot of people around me. And that just... might be the difference between a girl staying in longer mm-hmm. than not staying yeah, in longer. Yeah, that's true. I think, just have, yeah, having those people to kind of like back you, like had my friends and my family just 
always believe in yeah always believed in me and always believed that this was actually a career whereas I think a lot of the time people see it as like something on the, yeah <laughs> a hobby like something on the side and if and it's obviously so results driven as well like if you're yeah. not producing results then you have to kind of take a look back and think okay well maybe this is not the path I want to go you have to put so much effort into it it's like all or nothing yeah because like so, if you go to, imagine yeah. with, like training going to English schools mm -hmm. or whatever competition and then or going to like the nationals and then not performing or coming to the final and then coming last and then you're going I've got my A level coming yeah. coming up next year do I want to focus on do you like again next year or do I just want to yeah. go to that uni decision. and I think it's that decision making that we have to kind of like balance mm -hmm. what do you think about it? <laughs> you've been a teacher yeah that's, that's not true, true. <laughs> it's, it just suddenly like I was sitting there and I was listening to you and I was listening to Morgan and I was just thinking there is one clear way to keep to keep kids in athletics and and to push them into it as well um the reason i the one of the reasons why i think kids aren't as involved in athletics is simply because they just view it as a summer thing mm. so if you look at um if you look at it when you was in school when did you start doing athletics yeah, as soon so. as they got to like may yeah. april may oh yeah by the way for the next eight weeks or so we're going to be doing athletics yeah. i'm going to spray a little track yeah. on the green <laughs> but yeah have the guy walking around with the paint on out on the grass track and you know yeah i ran 10 9 on the grass track and everything <laughs> else um i think that's probably one of the ways to have kids more involved in athletics is that you have to make it mm. an all year thing the same way that you'd have football in school the whole year round yeah. you have basketball cricket swim well, maybe swimming um you'd have these things in the school throughout the year because there'd be this after school club this after school club yeah. but athletics always just has that it's a summer thing so mm -hmm. if like it's not yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly that so i think if you if you start off the school year from september right cool we're going to be doing um from from september to let's say the end of october we're going to do athletics outside mm -hmm. and then from november to march we're going to start working on like the sports or athletics because this is actually something that they have and we have the um because they have what's it called is it sessa it was like a college mm. it was a college type competition they had right. it when i was when i was doing track so maybe they don't do it no more um but they had that so i think the same way they have outdoor districts they could do an indoor version of that and you just yeah. and obviously you have 60 200 maybe not do the 400 because it's a, if even um, professional athletes will say how tough it is yeah. indoors to do that. So maybe you don't do that. Mm -hmm. But if you was to do that, you'd keep them more involved because now they're looking at it. It's like, oh, right, that track and field is actually, it is a yearly thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I mean, even like the cross country guys, they go from doing cross country, they probably it's drop down a bit yeah. to do um, fives, tens, mm -hmm. maybe a marathon if that's their thing. So maybe that's the way that we keep kids more in, get them involved and then keep them involved. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. We'll see. No, I, we'll I try know. it. I'll try it with my school and, and, Obviously, and see what anyone, happens. Obviously, if anyone has like a way that we can, that can help, you know, send us a message, drop us a message, and then we'll share it out with the world. <laughs> we'll um, try to educate people. I'm I'm all for pushing, it. and then I, and also I think it's you have to have people coming into the schools regularly and not just like athletes i think you should have coaches coming in mm -hmm. and you should be finding out okay how much is it going to be for for this coach to come to the school and and do this with a student because speaking from someone who works in the school and remembering what it was like when i was in school if i think back now i would not listen to the advice that my pe teachers given me on track and field unless it was something that they've done yeah like there's so much information that gets passed around wrong when you're just reading it from the book or mm -hmm. you actually have that experience of doing it and i think that would play a massive part in it as well depending on how it's been relayed to the students yeah like mm -hmm. some of some of my athletes go they've done the nationals they go to the nationals and then this teacher brings out a book on how you get scored Whoa. for your a <laughs> levels and you know what is the most frustrating because if you get to the national obviously international should be an A star because that's like the topic can go. Mm. But when you're a national athlete, you should be still getting an A. But like I said, <laughs> you like, should, I if you know. can get that standard, you should be getting an A. Yeah. But then we get to like C's because on of grass. Guys. On grass, you ran ten nine. Then you go districts and you ran ten one. <laughs> like because it's done by people who I'm gonna say they don't really know. Like mm. 
they do it either first from first footfall or when they see yeah. the flag goes up and then they've said, yeah, cool, that's it. I'm, I'm picking the stopwatch. <laughs> so if you have like actual track and field people involved in it, I think that's how you, you get things mm. done more. And I think us as a sport would have to do more. So coaches have to go to schools to, to pull out stuff and yeah. pull out um, athletes who they see are good. Because, yeah, the PT can say, oh, you know, you should go down the local track. But some athletes are like, no, nah, I want to do football, man. I, I ain't trying to I go. I asked my PT teacher. I ain't trying to go and down. he ignored me. I ain't trying <laughs> to go down. But and then I got bored and I saw bolts into my troll and I went in there, myself. But, but there you go. Like, your PE teacher suggested it and you were like, no, no, no. But if you have a coach come in and say, no, nah, I think you'd be really good at it. Or an athlete comes in and says, oh, I think you'd be really good mm-hmm. at high jump or you'd be really good at long jump. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah it's different. You're, you're going to take that more because that's actually someone who does the sport and is making it making it a living for them Mm. but track and field will always i think track and field is always going to have that kind of mindset to like people always have that mindset to track and field that it's just yeah but that's in the uk that's enough thing that's in the uk in the uk you're looking outside the square like oh i want to run because then if you then go to like the us like that's a different atmosphere obviously that's what every every spot they do out there but it's like I think I think in a way we should sort of like use the style they use in the US for sport. We should use the same thing, the same energy. like they compete pretty much every week. I love how the US do their I stuff can, like I can that. do that though. <laughs> what, the, I love watching the, it. The driving across <laughs> countries for oh. all these different meets. Nah, like, you know what? I, I know they're flying to different countries. Yeah. Do you know flying to different countries? Do you know what I me? love with the with the American system, and it, I think it's more outdoors. Um, when they have like the whole like show before the actual like football games, they yeah. have this massive show with like the band and stuff, and I think that is so sick. Yeah, we don't do that here, or I think like. English I think English. Harris. Course, Ac- yeah. I think <laughs> Harris Academy actually do do something like that. I'm sure that's I've good. been told that um, they do something similar to that. So that's quite sick. Mm. But other schools now. I mean, we had a basketball match the other day, and none of the students from our school were allowed to watch because it was intimidating to the other school. <laughs> that that is what we got told. It wow. would be intimidating for the other school to <laughs> to have our students watch the game because obviously everyone's cheering for wow. us and no one's cheering for them and i was like listen i will That's i will leave I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll defect teams and i'll be cheering i'll give them i'll give them pointers i don't yeah, mind just to get an atmosphere like, yeah just to get something going but if you if you're just playing a game to like yourselves yeah and the two refs yeah. And maybe one or two teachers like that's boring. You're get bored, yeah. That exactly. is boring. Like, I'm not gonna try as hard now, especially yeah. like if I'm the team that we played. They weren't. They were okay, but we won. Um, <laughs> but if they had an atmosphere to go off of, each team's performance would have been raised exponentially. Like because when you make a mistake, when people are watching, you don't want to make a mistake anymore. Yeah. Exactly. When no one is watching, you don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> so not my teammates. It will show up in a minute. <laughs> exactly. So I think yeah, I think across across sports we just need to do more mm. but even like in doha us. like when and it's different end of the spectrum but like when they had the light show that was <sighs> amazing like that was such a big part of the whole champ i hated the light show oh. simply no 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 no, no. Okay. I, I know this is, <laughs> that is phrased so wrong don't, don't i i disliked the light show simply because they didn't do it for everyone mm. That's what I didn't like. Yeah, I feel like if you're gonna do nice. it, do it. Yeah. Like like I said um, <clears throat> before we started rolling, keep that same energy for mm-hmm. everything. Like they done it for the, they done it for the men's hundred. I think they done it for the men's two hundred. They may have done it for the women's hundred. Did it for they, that Teflon. They didn't do it for the women's two hundred, which I thought raw. Like I would have definitely done it for this yeah. because um, Dina was just showing so much like yeah. great form throughout mm-hmm. the rounds. Like even from the hundred that she deserved to have that. Yeah. And then there was a lot of other events where they didn't do it. I don't know if it was because they were trying to save money or... I think it was because, like, there was other events going on at the same time. I think it was mm-hmm. the last event of the day, then they could do it or something like that. I don't know. Because they can't just shut off all the lights and people are like, <laughs> I mean, no, 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 but then, no, but you give them a warning. They're like, oh, yeah, by true. the way, we're going to do light shows. You know, just take a few more minutes to compose yourself yeah. and, and we'll get Doing you up. Doing the 3K, <laughs> just like, lights yeah. off. Yeah, like, you might, imagine, imagine you're throwing the jab and then the lights just shut off. <laughs> you're like, okay. oh, listen, I'm not going to lie. I'd use that to my whole advantage. I go onto the grass and dash it and then quickly run back. Like, like, oh my God, he just threw 96 meters. 
And I'm like, yeah, well, y'all don't know how, but I did it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the light show, I think it was a great idea. I just mm. didn't think that they used it as well as they could have. I think mm. that should have been a thing for every the, event. Yeah, every event. Or like you said, I mean, yeah, it was used for the finals, but I think mm. important finals. <laughs> yeah. Every final is important, but there are some that stand out more than others. Like that should yeah. have been done. Yeah. Um, you've got the triple jump there where you've got like some of the you've got like the best feel that we've had for History. such a yeah such a long time and the light show was nowhere to be seen I would, <laughs> I would have been loving that yeah I think that would have been sick yeah, that was the weird thing about triple jump like it just I don't know what the coverage was like back here it was probably quite good but like you there you don't <laughs> <laughs> um, like there you didn't even know like this is such an amazing competition between like Christian and Will like mm. it's crazy but over here it still it was still quite the same like mm. we would maybe see like the first couple of rounds and then three four and five you would catch it on a highlight yeah. they would just bring it back and be like oh by the way um, they'd, they'd, act, they'd make it act yeah. like it's happening now yeah, but yeah. we know that that's probably like from 10 15 minutes over because in the next thing you know yeah. oh we're in the last round i get ready and it's like oh okay but these guys have both jumped over 18 meters mm -hmm. one guy's like a few centimeters away from the world record yeah, this guy's yeah. now hot on his heels to to win a medal yeah and he's never beaten christian at a major champs if any year was going to beat with him in this year like that is something yeah, that was you push. An amazing story that yeah. is something that you push and th even like some of the some of the things that this is how oh, will's never won a world title. like he's won a world indoor title twice mm. but i suppose like I, like I was saying earlier it's like almost devalued because mm. if you're saying he's never won it but by my yeah, count he's got, yeah, he's got two yeah. you know yeah, I, I don't know but yeah that the coverage for that wasn't wasn't amazing and that was like one of the best um field events that yeah. they had going yeah it's it's weird i don't know i don't know why it's like that i would love to have being a field eventer but <laughs> i mean I, field events have always like they've always had that where they don't get mm. the coverage that they should yeah. Um, but there has to be some way that they can get as much coverage as the track events. I mean, I don't particularly watch distance events because mm -hmm. it's not my thing, mm -hmm. but they get so much coverage yeah. <laughs> as opposed to field events. Like, like they're watching 10K. <laughs> but, then, but then I suppose... It becomes like interactive. You can like choose what event you want to watch. That would have be like good. split screens or something like... But then do you know what it probably is as well? If there's a track event, there's just a track event. When there's a field event, there's at least three of there's at least three different field events going on yeah. at that time. So unless they and have they the interactive stuff, for a stuff, long time. So yeah, how what's the longest competition you've been in? Um, probably, like at a big level, probably the Olympic qualifying. That was mm -hmm. that one on a couple of hours, I think. That was long. <laughs> that was a long day. <laughs> Knowing myself, I would have probably been like, yeah, I'm taking a nap. <laughs> Someone wake me when it's my turn because yeah. I need to. I'm gonna sleep here because I can't stay awake for this. Yeah. What stage did you get to in that in that competition? Was it? Did you get to the final? Yeah, yeah, made the final. Like a, I think it was a weird final because basically I think they just wanted the competition to be over and done with. Like the yeah. increments like were crazy. I think we started at 187 um, opening height and then went 93. So like a lot of people. I think from fifth to tenth. Or fifth to like twelfth, we'll jump ninety three, no, right. and then it's one ninety seven. So that was weird. So, <laughs> weird. So, so, so on the technicality, where did you actually come based on the overall distance? So, well, if I jumped my first attempt, I would think I would have come fifth. Okay. If I jumped my third attempt, I came tenth. That is <laughs> so annoying. I suppose, but that's what I was saying about series. And would you prefer a great series or or mm. uh, or just that one height? So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um. So I've got some questions for you. Like, right. um, firstly, you mentioned like looking up Jessica Ennis's diet and stuff. Yeah. What is your diet like as an athlete? It's a hard, I think it's changed a lot from being a heptathlete to a high jumper. Mm -hmm. um, Cause obviously you don't need as much energy. Like when I was doing heptathlon, I was like constantly training, like mm -hmm. constantly burning energy. And when you're doing high jump, it's like, you're just not really doing as much. Um, but I think my diet's just changed so much. Like, um, it's pretty healthy. I don't think I'm, I'm quite good at 
right, this is the season. I need to be strict for this bit. And then mm -hmm. I know I can eat badly. Like obviously off season, that was yeah. great. And I'm back into training. It's like, right, okay. Like in off season, I'm like, I don't even want to see a vegetable. Just that's <laughs> not for me. Okay. Um, but then on season, I'm just like, yeah, quite... I work with nutritionists, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's more like the important thing is like basing carbs and protein stuff around training. Um, so the amount of energy you can consume, yeah, as well. Yeah, yourself physically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, it's difficult. Like it's such a weird one because I think because obviously there's so many different events in athletics. It's not just like one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So everything has to be so like individual. So it's been it's been a Okay, what's Process. your what's your favorite <laughs> meal um, in season? In season, probably just like a stir fry because they're just so quick and easy. And after training, you're like, I don't want to, I don't want to cook a cook big <laughs> meal. So I'm like, just chuck everything in the walk and see what happens. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, favorite meal off season? Pizza. Definitely. What type of pizza? So I have a really weird. I like aubergine and garlic on pizza. Uh, <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. I how did you like? How? I do. Why is that why. even a thing? That's yeah, like, like <laughs> that's like not... pineapple on pizza. Like it's, no, it's not like that bad. That, that's that's a no. And I'm like garlic on pizza makes like garlic bread. Okay, yeah. Cool. Aubergine's nice vegetable. Let's put that on top. I can't. I... <laughs> I'm, I can't find I the know, words for this. <laughs> I mean, if it's I'm a having a pizza, one. I'm picking like ground beef, green chili, sweet corn, pepperoni. No, I'm loading that up with a barbecue base and I'm good. Okay, so like, it's like Domino's have like barbecue base, chicken, sweet corn, but... Domino's or Pizza Hut? Texas barbecue. Domino's. Yeah. Domino's. Why? Yeah. Right, I haven't had Pizza Hut since I was about like 10 years old. So Seriously? I need to reevaluate that. <laughs> okay, I think I think you should have Pizza Hut and then then the sun. over like well maybe not the next few months because you'll be training in off season. May, maybe if you have like, do you have cheat days? Yeah, not like I'm like this is my cheat day. It's like oh uh, someone's birthday or whatever. Mm -hmm. I feel like I need the pizza. Okay, <laughs> that'll be a cheat day. Um, what is your favorite training session? Um. Probably anything like plyometrics or like any bounding session. Okay. Um, why? Um, I don't know. It's just fun. Like, so today I was doing like a fart leg with bounding and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and although it was horrible, like my legs were dead. Like I just love the bounding bit so much. I didn't even think about it as a as a training session. How far? Because I remember you, you said about the bounding. Um, mm. Was it the whole straight or just like a portion of the straight? Um, it was a whole street. It was on grass, so it's, I guess it's shorter. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you say, but what type of bounding? Because obviously, like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. there's Changes. different types. Um, it's like hops over hurdles, uh -huh. bunny jumps, um, like stiffness jumps. That, I now understand why you said your legs must have felt yeah. Oh, yeah, they were dead. <laughs> because one, one round not. of that, I'd be like, I can't do, I can't do this next yeah. round. Like, I'd be too worried about Cl like bad clattering knees. the hurdle yeah. and I got bad knees as it is so. <laughs> I was there for a break of bonus I got neck knee I got neck knee neck knee <laughs> <laughs> neck knee <laughs> maybe that wouldn't have been a thing okay um, I've noticed on Instagram you love coffee and you love mm. things like that so where would you say is your favourite coffee shop favourite coffee shop is one in Luffer actually okay. called Bon 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 Bon. And why? literally when everyone comes to the bathroom, I'm like, I'm taking you to Bon Bon. I don't even know why. I love it. I just love it so much. Um, okay. <laughs> Interesting. Maybe when we go to Bar, we can yeah. check. We'll, we'll check this place out. We'll, we'll check and this place we'll out. Know. We'll, we'll do it. And, and <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll message you say, okay, yeah, it's good. Or no, I prefer good, Starbucks. Um, <laughs> oh, so Starbucks isn't good now. Starbucks is awful. Starbucks is disgusting. Costa, Starbucks. You didn't just see her face. Like... I said Starbucks and she just like in her mind Shippen. she shot me. It's like she just shot me down like yeah, real quick do, without do saying anything. Stream, like coffee place. People don't rate like you know, coffee. Nice. Yeah, yeah no, coffee. like coffee drinkers don't I'm actually rate, is it? I don't like Pret. <laughs> I see Pret on my way to work and I'm like like no, 25 minutes. To be honest, Pret. I'm only if I go into Starbucks, I'm only gonna get a caramel macchiato medium or large, depending <laughs> on how tired I am in the morning. <laughs> Apart from that, I'm not really trying to go. Um favourite music? um what as an artist um okay so i'll do favorite art favorite artist drake. um drake 
favorite okay so favorite song oh do you Drake. know what so i'm so bad at so i'm like oh i love i love this music i love this i don't know what the songs are called what <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad. Like, like, oh, I love. I like. I went to a Drake concert with my brother um, when he was touring, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, I love this song." He's like, "Oh, what's it called?" I'm like, "No idea." I can <laughs> sing every single like word of that song, but I don't know what the song's called. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Apple Music, open. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, okay, so favorite artist is Drake, but I—I mm. I mean, that's fine. There's songs that I know and I will sing to the top of my lungs. Yeah. Tell me what it. Ask me what it is about. Like, don't know and shazam mm. can't help me because i can't find it um okay so favorite type of music when you're in competition in competition um just like hip-hop r&b like whatever's i'm on. liking this vibe like every <laughs> every person we have come in and i ask also, this question yeah. about music they all say hip-hop on r&b yeah. i'm loving this this is great i can i don't think i could listen to anything else like going to competition though like if i put a slow song on i'm going to bed like i'm not going to go out and compete. okay but when we say R and B and hip hop, are we talking not old school? Not old school. No. Okay. See now, now that's a bit. Yeah, different. yeah. You didn't want to say like, not old school. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Because everyone else has said nineties. Nineties, early yeah, two thousands. Okay, so you're more like let's say twenty. I'll say twenty fourteen. Like, yeah. Okay, I can I can vibe with that. That's cool. <laughs> um, favorite training partner. Hmm, that's such a hard one, actually. Who who get like who who makes you switch on like you get to you like okay yeah they're gonna mm-hmm. they I know they're gonna be on point so I need to be on point this session. Um, so my like obviously my training partner and groups and stuff gone yeah. a lot. Um, the last few weeks, but Beth Partridge, she's another mm-hmm. high jumper. Yeah. Um, she was in my group last year as well, and she's kind of like changed her setup as well. So okay. like, we'll end up being training partners again this season, which is nice. And nice. like she's a little bit older than me, um, mm. but she's like really, really motivating. So, okay, yeah. favorite place you've been on holiday? Um, Thailand. Thailand. When did you go to Thailand? Twenty sixteen. Okay, did Rio. you go with family or did you go with friends? Uh, I went with friends. That's cool. Nice. So, would you recommend? Would you recommend Thailand? Yeah, I think it's just so cheap when you're out there as well. Like the flights getting over there are expensive, but everything out there is so it's cheap, good. and like the food's amazing. Yeah, it's great. Okay, cool. So going forward, um, what's your plans? What's your motivations? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just let us know what, what the dealio is. Um, so yeah, at the moment, obviously Tokyo being so soon, that's just the biggest goal. Mm-hmm. Um, qualifying first. Yeah. Um, we need to get that done. Um, 96 is our qualifying. So okay. It's quite high. But... Do, you, do you think you can do it? I hope I can do it. Um, um, when will be the trials this year? June, I think. Oh, so it's back to early June again. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's early this year. Um, and then long term, probably back back to Aptathlon, really, and just seeing where that can take me. So, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, thank you for coming on cool. the podcast. Thanks for having me. Um, it's been trust me, guys. We've been trying to get this going for a long time, but she's a busy Sorry. lady. <laughs> it's, it's fine. She's a busy person, so you know, it's, it's like that sometimes. But um, listen, thank you so much for coming thank on. You. Um, thank you to YSN for sponsoring us. I'm DJ Armani, co-host Victor, beautiful Morgan Lake. We'll see you guys soon.